Hey YouTube and welcome to the second episode of Kent Walks. This episode we visit a village that isn't massively high on the tourist list but as with most of Kent's villages has its own special place in history, Small Hythe. The walk starts at the Chapel Down Vineyard and Winery. Grid reference TQ 893303 and parking is in the winery itself. There is a restaurant and a shop at the winery, so please, if you do use their car park, it'll be rude not to pop in for a taster and a slice of cake. From the vineyard, turn left up the road towards the phone box and hop over the stile next to it. Follow the high wheeled landscape trail eastwards and at the fork choose the left option as it sweeps northeast and then north around Dunbourne and on to L-shaped lake. Yep, that's its name. Follow the lake edge northwest into Oathouse Wood and after about 500 metres fork left off the trail onto a footpath that gently winds its way westwards towards Ratsbury. Emerging onto road, turn left for 60 metres before leaving the tarmac in favour of a footpath, passing a pond and venturing on past Pick Hill. The path will after a while meet the driveway to Ashenden where we will turn hard right back towards the road and picking up the first footpath on the left just after a small pond. Stick to this path as it heads south to appear at Small Hythe Road and stay on the road southwards for 600 metres back to the start. Right, enough talking, let's get walking. Vines were first introduced into England by the Romans, but it wasn't until Tudor times that winemaking really took off when almost 3 million bottles a year were produced by local vineyards. When Henry VIII disbanded the Roman Catholic monasteries, wine production dramatically declined and English wine became somewhat of a laughing stock. But 40 odd years ago, the industry has been revived and today is flourishing and rivaling some of the best wines from around the world. Thanks to the well-drained, south-facing, chalky downland slopes, which makes Kent an ideal place for growing superb quality grapes. Hythe is an old English word meaning landing place or port and looking at the map you'd be forgiven for being a little confused as Small Hythe isn't exactly next to the sea. But back in 1250 the river Rother when Small Hythe was first settled was much wider and deeper. A huge storm in 1287 altered the course of the river and Small Hythe became a natural port and soon an important asset to the wool trade and shipbuilding industry. Many royally commissioned vessels were built here including Jesus, one of the largest ships built in medieval England, commissioned by Henry V in 1416 and weighing in at around a thousand tons. A huge fire in 1514 that destroyed the sink port and much of the old town did see significant restoration including a new house for the harbour master, Small Hythe Place. More on that in a little while. At a time of great naval battles, the need for larger ships ensued, and the silting up of the River Rother over the years meant that Small Hythe became less and less viable, and it produced its last big ship, 
the Great Galleon, in 1546, at the request of Henry VIII. Henry had, in the meantime, opened much more suitable shipbuilding docks at Woolwich and Deptford. 37 of small hythe shipbuilders walked to Woolwich and started work on the then largest warship in the world, the Henry Grace Adieu, translated Henry Grace of God, and also known as Great Harry. So, back to Small Hythe, and in particular Small Hythe Place, most commonly known as the home of the number one Shakespearean actress, Ellen Terry. Ellen lived in the 16th century timber-framed house from 1899 until her death in 1928. Ellen came about the old harbour master's house as she was riding past on her way to Tenterden from Rome and instantly fell in love with the building and bought it several years later, where she entertained and socialised with many friends and family. Ellen's career spanned 65 remarkable years, two of her most famous roles being Portia in The Merchant of Venice and Beatrice in Much Ado About Nothing. Upon her death, her daughter Edie remodelled the much-loved abode into a museum to honour her mother's life and career and is now beautifully cared for by the National Trust. Small Hythe Place is open to the public as a museum displaying oodles of memorabilia from the late Thespian, and more details can be found on the National Trust website. <laughs>